Go. This is kind of a fluid upholstery form. It's not uh, typical of, of building something from scratch. We're working with historic materials that have moved or have partially been lost. And so the idea is to fill voids in such a way that uh, the seat can be reused, that also will be able to be rebound to the original pod without having to make uh, additional prosthetics or completely scratch the, the original materials and start with all new. For that uh, so I'm gonna uh, come end, in. we're going to use Algerian, which is a shredded palm leaf. It smells very good. It's, it's very green. It smells like hay. I, I've seen it. Yeah, it does smell like hay. It's a little bit sweet and um, very kind of herby. It, um, you can see these long strands. Uh, back in the old days, early 20th century, I've spoken to some upholsters in that period, said that they used to receive their Algerian twisted into ropes. It just been twisted around and around and around until they came into a figure eight. And the guys would uh, get hold of these huge hanks of, of Algerian and take hooks to each end of the hank and just unwind them, maybe sometimes as many as 100 feet or more, until they could unwind it and rip it apart. So it's a nice long strand fiber. It packs well, it stays springy, <coughs> and for that end, I'm going to use that as the filler back toward the rear of the uh, seat pod. I'm going to, to lash it in using a very long curved needle and some, some heavy um, lashing twine that's been waxed. Now, typically, there would be a, a stitch that runs through the back thusly just creating loops of material or loops of string and the stuffing would just simply be tucked underneath. But in this case we're not going to do that because I need to be able to control the density of the stuffing and so I'm going to just take these these hanks of, of um, stuffing and stitch them in section by section. I'm going to back stitch. I'm lashing through the uh, spring buildup and the burlap. I only need one layer, not two layers. If you use two layers, of twine and try to knot it in this particular circumstance, it will end up making a, um, a knot that is, um, that won't tighten. You make a slip knot. And just simply pull it in. Now there's enough tension with this wax twine where it won't slip itself back out. And you can control it. You don't have to tighten it down so tight that it's, it um, dimples. You can come back and stretch it back out where you want it. Take another bit of Algerian. You can card it out. Much of this is by feel, so you just need to practice how much filler you need. And if you're wrong, you can always pull the excess back out from underneath the string. I could come back and just pull some of this out without having to remove the twine. And again, I'm just going to use a back stitching method rather than just going forward. It's going to come back on itself and create some additional tension. And along with that, I will create a very simple locking stitch. Nothing as tight as the stitches that you saw in the spring build up. Come around once. Around twice, but I'm not gonna take this other end of the line 
and knot around it. I don't want to make a tight knot because I want to be able to slip it around to add extra stuffing if necessary. Okay, here it comes. Oops. Here we go. You can control this line doing it this way so you have just a, a half knot that stays into position. Work it with your fingers. There are needles, regulating needles that you can use and we'll show you that just a little bit later on. When this row is complete, I'll come to the front of the um, piece and set in a much finer row of Algerian and then we will set the historic pot on top of it and see where we are as far as the film.